All right, so at this point, you should have completed your Tinkercad tutorials, and now you have a pretty good idea of the basics of how Tinkercad works. So your last assignment was to recreate this blue mug that I made right here for you to duplicate in Tinkercad. What I want to do now is take a moment to walk you through the process of creating this in Tinkercad using some of the tools that will help you make a nice replica and also tools that you'll use in the future in designing some precision items. So let's get started. The first thing we notice here when you look at our mug is that the primary shape in that is a cylinder. So we need to get a cylinder and we'll take a cylinder right here from the shapes palette and we'll pull it in to our work plane right there in Tinkercad. So we have a cylinder. It looks a little smaller than mine, so we need to resize it. There are a few ways you can resize. You can click and drag on the circ on the corners there, and you can see the values going up. Of course, those are in millimeters, so it's 53 by 46. I want it to be, um, I think I want it to be 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters so I can drag that until I get to then. And the same way I can also pull the top up till it is 50 millimeters high. So there we go, we've got our cylinder right there. There's other ways you can do it too. We could type in the value we wanted. We could go to these little, uh, the little blocks that show us that, click on that, you can type 60, 60, and then I could go um, 60 like that. Also, if you click on one of the handles, like a corner or a top, and you hold down the shift key, whenever you resize it, it will stay proportional. Unlike if you let go of the shift key, then it just stretches it and squishes it. But if you hold on the shift key, you can keep it proportional. So, uh, but in this case, let's go with uh, 50 and 50. And there is our cylinder, except it's not really a cylinder, is it? Um, you can see all these flat edges around the sides. In fact, there are 20 flat sides making up the cylinder. So it's not nice and smooth like the mug in my example here. So what you want to do is go to this uh, menu palette right here, the shape that we are on, and we want to drag the sides bar. This is a good habit to get into. Anytime you want something to be round, go ahead and design it round. Whenever you pull a cylinder or a circle or something like that into Tinkercad uh, and it has those flat edges, go ahead and pull your sides all the way up so that it's nice and smooth. That adds a degree of polish and precision to what you are making. So uh, we have our cylinder. It is uh, coming along nicely, uh, very similar to ours. So now I guess we need to uh, make the hole in the middle of the cylinder. So we're going to need another cylinder for that. So we're going to pull that on out here. And again, uh, we're going to make this. This one is 50 by 50 by 50. I want to keep our walls somewhat thick. So I'm going to say this one's going to be 40 by 40. And I type those in. And then let's make it um, 50 high so that it matches the height of this right here. And then you put it in, you can see the walls are nice and thick. Uh, they might be a little thick. Let's go to 42 by 42 here. Uh, and of course, what's that you say? But wait, the sides are still flat. That's right. We don't want flat sides inside our coffee mug. So let's go ahead and pull that up and look at that. There it is. Now, I've drug it in here into the middle. And, and if we cut this out right now, let's see what happens. Uh, I group the two or I select the two by clicking over here on the side and dragging a, uh, a box around those. And I click those. And if I just said, okay, group that, well, that gives us a hole. But unfortunately, this mug will never hold coffee because we, uh, we totally cut it out. So uh, let's undo that by pushing the undo button. And if the sides, let's see, if this is 50, by 50 and the hole is 42 by 42. That means that it is eight millimeters narrower than what we have right here, uh, which means the walls are four millimeters on each side. So what I'm gonna do is lift this up to three, four millimeters off the ground. That means the bottom of the mug will be just as thick as the walls of the mug. Now. 
this looks like it's centered, but how do we know it's really centered? We, we don't actually know that that it's centered. I mean, that could just be like kind of close to it. Nobody wants coffee mug that's uh, got a thin spot in it, easy to break and so forth. So we want to make sure it is centered. That is where one of my absolute favorite tools comes in, and that would be the align tool. So again, we're going to click and drag a box around our two objects, and then we're going to go to this tool right here. This right here is the align tool. One of my favorite tools. We're going to click on that. Uh, you should never try and eyeball something to be centered because it doesn't always come out that way. It just depends on which way you're looking at it. Like this might look kind of centered to you from this angle, but when you actually do it, it's, it turns out that it's not as centered as you thought it was. So the align tool puts this box around it. You can see that it has a side that goes up and then it has a side for width and a side for length. And it has these little dots on here and you can click on whichever one you want. If you click on this dot, you can see a preview of what's going to happen when a little red shadow appears. And that means it's gonna move both this cylinder and this cylinder into alignment on the top edge. And that's not what we want because again, we'll have a hole in the bottom. Um, if we do here, it's gonna be centered up and down. If we do here, it's gonna be centered at the base. So what we want to do is we want to center it left and right, that side to side and front to back so we know it is in the center. And we're going to use the center selection of this. So it just centered it left and right. If you didn't see that, watch closely. Here it goes. See, it's the hole is slightly off to this side. Whenever I click on the align tool, the hole snaps into place. So now it's centered left and right, but not front to back. So we want to make sure it's centered front to back. And by the way, you can confirm that it's centered because this part right here is gray. So you can confirm that it is centered right there. Uh, but this part you'll notice is not gray. So we want to click on it, and now it's gray, which means it's centered both front to back and side to side. And we know that it is just slightly uh, off the base by four millimeters, the same width as the wall. So now let's go ahead and group everything and look, boom. We have the inside of our coffee mug. It is nice and uh, equal width on all sides, and it's got a bottom on it. And that was just three moves to review. We made the cylinder, we brought a cylinder inside the cylinder, we aligned them, and we grouped them. And now all our mug needs is a handy dandy handle. So I'm going to look down here and I'm going to go for that thing that looks like a donut. It's called the Taurus. And we're going to pull this Taurus in right here. It kind of looks like a donut and that's kind of what we're going for on this. So we know that our mug is 50 millimeters high. Our handle doesn't need to be that big. So I'll tell you what, let's make it... Let's make it 40. That leaves us 10 on the top and the bottom to work with. Now, this is a funny handle if it just sits on the side like that. We don't want that. Oop. I don't have 40. I have 40.30. Let's change that to 40 and 40. There we go. So here's what we need to do. We need to use the rotation. That's those little arrows right there. And we can click on it, and then we can either drag it, if you hold down shift, it'll snap into degrees by 45. Uh, if you don't hold down the shift, it'll snap by 25. Or you can actually type in the value by clicking on it and then click here. And then we're going to say we want to move it 90 degrees so it's up and down. Notice it is below the work plane, kind of out of way. A quick, handy little uh, quick key is to push the D key. That is D as in doggy. And if you push D, you'll notice that it, boom, pops to where it is sitting flat on the plane. If you ever wonder if something is actually sitting flat on the work plane, just select it and press D. So there you go, push D. Of course, you might be looking at it saying, but look at those flat sides. Good, I'm glad you noticed that. I'm gonna slide this over so we don't have uh, the same flat sides. And by the way, these also will provide you with a couple of other options like radius, if you want it to be woo, bigger like that, um, or if you wanted the tube to be a little narrower, a little thicker, you could do that. But I'm going to leave it like it is. Um, and we're going to bring our handle on over here. And look at that. Our handle is not centered. But we know how to center it now by going to 
the align tool. So I'm going to click and drag a square around the whole thing. I'm going to click on my align tool. We want it in the middle that is going side to side. You can see it's kind of off to the side, so we want it in the middle. There's that. And there we go. It's now in the center, but we also want it not to sit on the bottom. We want it to come halfway up. So let's pull it halfway up just like that. Now there's a little problem. You've probably noticed it, and that is our mug has a handle on the outside and on the inside, which is kind of useless. I'm going to show you a quick trick. There's two things we could do right now. We could pull this on out here again. And we know that it's 40 long, and I could take a, a square, like a box hole, like this right here, and I can make it big enough. I can make it half the length of it, which is 20, and then I could align it to the edge, just like that, and then group that, and then I've got a halfway shaped handle, like that. And then we take our little handle and put it right next to the edge, and go use our align tool again to make sure it's in the middle. And, oh, see, it's not touching. It only looked like it was touching, but this hand was floating, so I'll pull it on in just like that. So you do it like that, and then you've got a mug. If you group the whole thing, it becomes uh, that beautiful blue, and I could group it all into one mug just like that, and then we're done with the challenge. But I'll show you another way that you could do the handle also. Let me undo what I just did. And I'm going to undo everything I did all the way back to the handle. And in this case now, the handle is uh, whole again. I'm going to put it back in here, about halfway in. And then I'm going to use my line tool to make sure it's correct side to side. And we can see that it is because that's gray, which means you are already aligned that direction. And we see that this one is gray, meaning that we're up and down a line. But we've got that handle stuck in the middle. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to click back on my cylinder and I'm going to ungroup my cylinder. Whoops. I'm going to click ungroup and that makes the cylinder pop back out. And now I'm just going to select everything and then group it again. And that cylinder will do the job of cutting out the handle for us. And there you go. One mug just like exemplified for you. You can make any color you want. We have a blue one, maybe you want a red one. And there you go. Um, so that's just a quick tutorial. Note that we used the uh, D key to flatten it down on the plane. We used the align tool. And of course we created holes and uh, grouped objects. Hope this helps and have a great day.